Republican Congressman Mike Gallagher joins me now via Skype. His home state of Wisconsin saw its biggest single day spike Wednesday with the number of confirmed cases now uh, nearing 600. Uh, Congressman, thank you very much for joining us, sir. I appreciate your time. Let me start by just asking you really quickly, the Congress, as we mentioned, uh, or I should say the House, expected to pass this $2 trillion package. Do you expect it to do so? Do you expect the House to pass this tomorrow unanimously? I do. I mean, when you have a vote like 96 to 0 in the Senate, I think it gives a lot of momentum as we see the cost of shutting down our economy, the need to help small businesses and workers in particular. I think perhaps the most important part of this legislation, however, is going to be the money, nearly $100 billion, that we're going to appropriate directly to the front line of this fight. In other words, the hospital system, the nurses, the doctors, the first responders, the cops, the firefighters. It's my view that if we don't win this war on the front line, there aren't enough federal dollars we can print to cover the cost. We have to defeat the disease, and the quicker we do that, the quicker our economy will recover. So I think there's a lot of urgency to get something passed. There's an open question as to whether you know, you have a recorded vote, whether you have a voice vote. I know we're debating that right now. I'm looking forward to talking to my colleagues about that. But I do think at the end of the day, given the urgency, something will pass. Do you believe that this will be enough? Is this going to get us out of the woods? Or in other words, do you think that we're going to need yet some kind of uh, another stimulus package? I don't like to use this as a stimulus package. This is more of a relief package uh, for Americans. But do you think we will need a stimulus package to try to get this economy back up and running? Well, you made a critical point there, and I just would add to it, you know, this is you shouldn't think of this conceptually as a bailout here. The government has actually forced a lot of restaurants, bars, small manufacturers in northeast Wisconsin to shut down. And so, you know, constitutionally, under the Fifth Amendment, you're entitled to just compensation when the government does something like that. So it's important to make that distinction. You're absolutely right. I hope this is the last thing we need to do. It all depends on whether we win that fight on the front lines. I just would argue there's one immediate way where every person in office or running for office could help with their own mini, tiny district-focused stimulus. And that's to suspend all their political fundraising activity and look to the extent possible to donate some of their existing campaign funds to local charities that are in need right now. That's what I've pledged to do with my campaign. I mean, at a time when people are losing their livelihoods, potentially their lives, I think we should be spending every marginal minute and every marginal dollar on how can we help them out, not on political fundraising or electioneering. Yeah, I think a lot of Americans would agree with you on that one for sure. Let me get your thoughts, though, on what kind of metrics you're personally looking for to, to know if this is working. What are you looking for, either numbers, uh, the fight against the coronavirus, the economic recovery? What is it that you're looking for to see if we're on the right track or not? Right now, in my mind, I have three priorities uh, to see whether we're winning. It's testing, testing, and testing. We are trying to ramp up. Our hospitals are doing incredible things overnight in setting up mobile testing facilities, but we're still not where we need to be in terms of the turnaround time. It's taking too long to process those tests at the state labs, at the private labs. We need to be able to turn these tests around in a matter of hours, not days, and we're not there right now because that's testing is a way you get data Data is a way you get intelligence, and intelligence is how you fight smarter. Intelligence is how you win a war. I say that as an intelligence officer by trade, so I'm a little biased, but we need better data in order to uh, defeat this more effectively. And so testing to me is key. If you've seen countries that have effectively tackled this, like South Korea, testing seems to be their secret ingredient. 